Graham Linehan, um, the British um, comedy scriptwriter and, and comic and author. Um, we had him on very briefly yesterday to talk about his visit to New Zealand, his cancellation or problems getting into Australia, and the way he has been cancelled by, well, I don't know, woke British um, lovies. Um, and it would seem to us that, um, you know, when people say there is no culture war, Linehan's going on about nothing. Well, the fears that have been expressed about cancel culture still existing in New Zealand. And if you don't know what cancel culture is, I'll just give you a quick thumbnail on that. It is the non-personing, the commercial and personal shunning of people who do not hold what might widely be described by liberals or, or, or self-described progressives as liberal enough views. And cancellation involves losing your job, losing your livelihood and being socially stunned. It's actually going to be a bit of a theme this morning in our first two interviews. But having had Graham on, Graham Linehan on yesterday, uh, we find out that cancel culture uh, and the left will always tell you it doesn't exist, there are no culture wars. Well, there sure are. And they seem to have... Um, well, they seem certainly those wars to be raging in the city of Christchurch. To find out what's happened, we're joined now by the people who are bringing Graham Linehan to New Zealand for the speaking tour, the Free Speech Union, and Jonathan Ayling joins us now. Jonathan, nice to have you back with us. What has happened in Christchurch? Well, Sean, uh, that's a very strong intro there, exactly. If, if we think the fight for free speech is, is over because the government has changed, uh, well, we're here to tell you something different. Uh, what's happened in Christchurch is that we have a venue that has pulled out. Look, this is, I think, now possibly our fifth venue. Uh, as we've been arranging uh, just just three events in, in the country, and one in Auckland, one in Wellington, one in Christchurch. Uh, each city has had uh, uh, cancellations. I think each city has had at least two cancellations now. And so, uh, look, at one level, we were prepared for this. Uh, when, when we were lining up this tour, we knew that cancel culture and the fight for free speech is very much still uh, a, a fight that we need to be pressing into. We knew okay, that... Okay, so what happened tried, specifically in Christchurch? Because I understand you had a council venue booked. Yes, and, and, and look, Sean, this is, this is going to be a saga that plays out for a little okay, while. What, what, was the venue, venue what, what venue was and, it that you had? The Hackley Oval, and uh, so it's all run by the, the Christchurch City Council uh, Ototahi Venues outfit, and, uh, and and we had specifically had council venues prepared uh, in each city as well if private venues fell through, which had happened, uh, because council venues, as we've shown in at least two court cases now, do not have the right to discriminate on uh, on perspectives. And so uh, we had gone, okay, look, our, our fallback option will be council venues because uh, that way uh, they actually can't give in to the pressure that might build around trying to cancel uh, Graham Linehan. And, uh, and so we had, uh, about three weeks ago, um, first reached out to uh, to the council to, to get uh, the Hackney Oval and, and two weeks ago we had uh, completed that. Now, I'll spare you uh, too many of the technical details, Sean, but, but one of the features of this is that um, uh, you don't pay an invoice for the use of the venue until after the event. Mm. And so uh, there were no money had changed hands. Uh, we had signed the contract. They had accepted the booking. No money had changed hands. Uh, and yet that's because you, you get a, uh, a statement, but you don't get an invoice until after the event. So maybe uh, maybe that's an out clause that they've decided to incorporate. But uh, they, they contacted us, and this is, you know, uh, just uh, uh, several days now before our event there. And they say, oh, look, uh, March is a, a really, really busy month for us. And uh, we, we actually don't have capacity for you. We're, we're fully booked. And uh, and I said, well, I, I frankly find that quite hard to believe. You know, we uh, we've had this in place for for a number of weeks now. We're getting pretty close to the piece. Um, I really, I, I, to be honest, I just find it hard to believe that uh, all of a sudden you've realised that you just don't have enough space. And they said, oh well, no, that's that's the issue here. And I said, well, look, you know, we 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 really need to find a way through this. Um, and so you know, two days prior to that, two days following. 
what's your capacity like? Can we shift this around? I oh, know the, the whole book, of, uh, whole month of March, we're just fully booked. Entirely just, booked up. Of- Hagley Oval is, ju- is just as a venue, and I presume this was a room in the venue. You weren't going to have an entire crowd in Hagley Oval. No, that's um, right. And it really is it completely booked up. Not a single Apparently, slot. Apparently, what, what what we're going to find out, though, Sean, is, is whether whether that is the case and whether there's been any other conversations and when the, whether they've received uh, any complaints because we've we've always had heck out of them. We said, look, I, I said, look, mate, I, the, the commercial director called me and I said, look, mate, uh, let me who's, give you who's the advice. Who's the commercial director? Oh, uh, look, I, I won't say his name. Well, well we're, we're um, going to find out who he is anyway because I'm going to try and get him on the program, see if he's talking uh, bullshit. Uh, Danny Schroeder. Danny name. Schroeder. Is that right? And... Uh, that's correct, yes. Yeah, and Danny so, Schroeder. Look, look, Sean, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. It is entirely possible that uh, Ototahi Venues made a big administrative <laughs> error. And they are and, entirely booked and, at Hagley and, and, and Oval. Is not entirely a... booked, and, it, and it took them three weeks to figure that out. Oh, Jonathan, um, come it, on. It, it, well, you know... You know uh, the, well, at uh, least they didn't the pull the health million. and safety or staff would be upset excuse, which is the old one, well, that Linda well, Clark came that, up but, for, for Massey University, for Don Bradish. That's the one... Well, we, we, we had uh, we had Hutt City Council try and pull that one on us, and we had our, our in-house lawyer contact them quite quickly and say, don't try pull this one or we'll see you in court and we'll win. And so, uh, look, uh, Hutt City Council looked for ways to get out as well. But, Sean, the, the, the reality of the issue here is, you know, we've had at least two cancellations in each city. Where else, we've gone on where else is cancelled, council-wise? Uh, 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 no, Christchurch is the only council that has uh, council council okay. on us. Okay. Okay. But 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 the the point is, you know, we're, we're literally talking about a handful of emails. I, I think when uh, Prefab cancelled our booking, they had received three emails complaining, and and I just go. This I have some sympathy for a private outlet that's just trying to do their business, and yeah. they say, "Yeah, come on," and, and and they receive hundreds of emails, and they really feel like the business that they've build, been building for years is going to be threatened by this. I have some sympathy for that. For the people that receive three emails and then decide to cancel the booking, look, it's poor business. It emboldens the ca- the cancel culture warriors, mm. and it, it's spineless. And and uh, you know I I think uh, I think actually we need to have some pushback if if if, if others want to to let, let their opinions know uh, to some of these venues this is what makes cancel culture viable the fact that people are willing to they're give afraid. it after receiving well yep yeah, but you know if they're afraid after they receive three emails they need their mummy to tell them a good night story three emails should not be enough to make people buckle under cancel culture.